Luke 24, beginning at verse number 30. <clears throat> and it came to pass, as he said it meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he taught with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them. Now I'll be honest with you as a husband, as a father, as a provider, as a pastor and now as an evangelist, I have not been able to spend as much time with my family as I would have liked to spend. But one of the things I've learned through the years is it's not so much important how much or the quantity of time that we spend together, but it is important of the quality of time that we spend together. This is also true to me as a Christian. It is more important of the quality of time that I spend with my relationship or in my relationship with Jesus Christ. We again are talking about those Emmaus disciples. That word disciple lets me know that they are followers of the Lord Jesus. No doubt they have heard him uh, preach to multitudes. They have watched as he's worked one miracle after another. And they, as they followed him, have watched him uh, live a perfect life and honor God the Father. But now he's made that seven and a half mile walk along with them. He's went into their house and here he is sitting around the supper table. I'm telling you they had spent a lot of time with him but now in these moments of our text they're spending quality time. You and I as God's people spend a lot of time with the Lord. We're in revival meeting. We're in Sunday services. We're at the prayer time. We're in the Bible school. We're in the sun, we spend a lot of time with the Lord Jesus but are we actually spending quality time? All that time they had followed him, all those miracles they had seen, all those sermons they had heard him preached and yet when it didn't work out like they wanted, they turned their back on him and headed for the house. They packed their bat and ball and they were going to go home. But I say now, here setting just them and the Lord Jesus. It is this quality time that changes their life. It is this quality time that does something in them and for them that makes them totally different. It is this quality time that makes the difference. And for a few minutes I want to preach on that thought. Quality time makes the difference. We'll see beginning in verse number 30 that it was this quality time with the Lord Jesus that enlightens them. Look what it said. It said it came to pass as they said it meet with them. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. Now I want to point out something before I get to the thought here. If you'll notice he always did this. He took bread and he blessed it and then he break it. One of the truths of the word of God is that you and I as God's people will never be what God intended for us to be until he breaks us. You will not feed 5,000 plus women and children with five loaves and two fishes until you break it. You will not smell Mary's ointment of her alabaster box until you break it. And that world out there will never see Jesus in here until he breaks us. All oh, gently and tenderly as possible. May the Lord break us. But the truth of the matter is uh, he blessed that bread uh, before he broke it. Have you ever been on top of the mountain uh, and it seemed like everything was 
was going just right and God was a moving and God was real and God was blessing and all of a sudden the bottom fell out from under it and the world turned upside down. That's not the devil trying just to kill you but that's the hand of God working in your difficulties to break off those parts that don't look like him and fashion you into his son. He'll always bless you before he breaks you. But here in that taking the bread, blessing, breaking, and giving it to them, they are enlightened about the importance of the Lord Jesus. They realize that every blessing that they have in their life, every good gift, every good thing I got, I owe it to him. It came from him. He took that bread, blessed it, oh hallelujah, for the blessing of God. Where would I be tonight if God had not have put his hand of blessing on me? Look back over the years and think where you'd be had it not been for the blessing of God, the favor of the Lord Jesus in our life. Then he blesses this bread, breaks it, and he gives it to them. It is reminding them that every need he's important because he's the one who has supplied my every need I used to say this I was born poor raised poor my daddy used to say son I'm going to raise you poor it'll keep you humble I was about 12 before I found out he wasn't raising us poor we are just poor I used to make this statement I've lived all of my life hand to mouth from God's hand to my mouth but I've lived long enough to know that was not a false statement that was not just some sentence that I say but it is the truth that every meal I've eaten, every blessing I've had, every house everything that I've got is because of the Lord Jesus they're not walking away from him now, hallelujah they're understanding that without you I'd be nothing I'd have nothing, I I wouldn't be able to do anything. He's so important in my life. Here they're enlightened during this quality time. They're enlightened to the importance of Jesus. Verse number 31 he says and their eyes were open and they knew him. <laughs> he made himself known. Now, some people believe that it was in the way that he blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to them that enlightened them and they realized it was him. Maybe so. I actually, this is Weaverology, I actually believe that he blessed the bread, broke it, gave it to them, and when they took it out of his hand... Yeah they saw a nail print and they realized that's him that's my Messiah that's my Savior thank God for the morning setting six pews back on my preacher's right hand side I didn't come looking for God I didn't have God on my mind my man of God was three quarters of the way down the uh, center aisle he's standing in a pew preaching like a wild man I hadn't heard one song they sang don't know who prayed the prayer don't know what the choir special was don't know who sang the special and wasn't looking for listening to the sermon but all of a sudden the Holy Ghost came to that six pew that had me hemmed up right in the middle of it and the Holy Ghost stepped in right in the middle pulled the blinders off my eyes and I knew him they didn't have to sing 16 stanzas uh, just as I am nobody had to tell me a sad dying going to hell story my man of God was still preaching I popped up like a jack in the box kicked pocketbooks out of the way stepped over legs they was pulling at my clothes thought I'd lost my mind I made my way to an old fashioned altar I'm just telling you what happened to me I didn't go up a Romans road I didn't go through Philippian jail I didn't carry up myself up an Ephesian expressway somebody said brother Weaver did you pray the sinner's prayer I didn't know a sinner had a prayer I 
realized it was him and I wanted him I had to have him I knew I know him it's him I made my way and fell in that altar and you know what I found out that morning I found out he wanted me he came by looking for me I, he identified himself made himself known to me most of us remember at least the place when he made himself known saved me and when he saved us and hallelujah I ain't saying you got to know the date if you do wonderful I ain't saying you got to know the day of the week or the time but if God did for you what he did for me I guarantee you you can go back to that place I can take you tonight within two feet of where I knelt in repentance and faith and got born again we all realize that day when we actually knew him and he saved us but what's this phrase? And he vanished out of their sight. Not only did he identify himself as Savior, but now he's identifying himself as sovereign. In other words, I conquered death. Graves cannot hold me. Corruption cannot defile me. The enemy cannot defeat me. I am Lord of all. And to show them, to identify it, time and space cannot confine me. I'll just vanish out of your sight. I'll just pop from here to Jerusalem. I'll just go where I want, when I want, how I want. Stop, hold your head up, child of God. Put your lip back in. Stop your knees trembling. The Lord we serve is identifying himself tonight to be above all, to uh, be stronger than all, to be able to supply all. Don't worry about death. He already kicked the hens out of it. Don't worry about the devil. He's already bruised his head. He's a more than just a savior he's our sovereign God who sits on high and looks down low and controls everything that's going on <laughs> he just vanished out of the sight one of the greatest uh, to me scriptures about the power and authority of the Lord Jesus is when they come and get him in the garden and they walk up he said, who, see, who are you seeking? Who are you looking for? And they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm he. And the whole crowd just fell down. Yeah. Yeah. He whoops, I got to turn it down just a little bit because you can't handle me. That's why he just reveals it to us a little at a time. Because if he just dumped it all on us right now, we'd have to have brand new bodies. Because it'd kill us. It'd blow our minds. But just to let them know that I'm not just a Messiah. I'm not just a Savior. But I'm the Lord. I'm the King of the Jews. I'm the King of the universe. I'm the Lord of Lords. He just vanished out of their sight. It was this quality time that enlightened them. As we get to verse number 32, we'll see it was this quality time that excited them. Look what it said in verse 32. He's gone. He just vanished. They looked at one another. And they don't say, how did he do that? Where did he go? No, because he'd done a... He had done enlightened them. They ain't got to wonder. They know now. They know. Here's what they say to look at each other. Watch what they say. Did, they said one another, did not our heart burn within us? In other words, we see the reality of their excitement. Just when they knew him, when they found out he wasn't some stranger, he wasn't some standoffish God. Do you know when God first revealed himself, he is the God way up in heaven and then he became the God over there on a hill and then he became the God over there at the house but since Jesus came and birthed us into his family he's not just a God up in heaven he's not just a God on a hill he's not just a God in a house but hallelujah he's the God in our hearts and they said did I not our hearts burn within us I'm I'm telling you revival fires uh, but 
begin to stoke back up. Uh, something had set them on fire. Oh God, tonight may our heart burn uh, with the excitement of the God that lives inside of us, of the God that saved us, of the God who's Lord. Uh, when's the last time that you got so fired up that you felt like your insides were on fire? Oh, we need the excitement for the Lord Jesus again. The reality. Matter of fact, Jeremiah said, I'll not mention his name again. He done me wrong. He said, I'm gonna quit. I'm done. He said, I did, I would have done all right. <laughs> but his word was in me like a fire. Shut up in my bones. And I couldn't take it. I could not talk about him. I couldn't, oh, when's the last time that he got the fire going so uh, heavy in your heart, in that inner man, that you couldn't help but tell somebody about it. You couldn't help but brag on him. You couldn't help but shout. You couldn't help but sing. You couldn't help but read his word. Oh, God, give us that excitement that comes from time with you. What's well, this? Not only the reality of their excitement, we see the reason of their excitement. It wasn't because Holy Ghost goosebumps got on them. It wasn't because they're singing my favorite song. It wasn't because my favorite preacher's are preaching. They said, while he talked with us, by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures, he said there's just something in the way he said it. And when he got to talking about his word, it just opened up. It just became more than black words on white paper. It just became more than words that were going into our ear. I don't know about you, but I've been reading this book sometime uh, and my mouth start watering. I've been reading this book sometime and get so excited, I just have to stand up and preach it and ain't nobody even around. Uh, I just have to let it out because they get to talking to you. I'm gonna tell you this, I believe in studying, I believe in praying, I believe in preparing, but the best preaching comes when all of a sudden out of nowhere, Jesus steps up behind you and starts whispering it in your ear and letting it flow out of your mouth uh, it'll wear you out uh, it'll preach you to death uh, but there'll be a fire a uh, burning you know what cr crank up your fire uh, let him uh, open up the scriptures you'll never find that well I'm waiting on God to speak to me read that word well I want him to speak to me audibly read it out loud because <laughs> that this book is I know I'm a dinosaur I know that I'm old school I know that I'm out of touch but I am convinced that this King James Bible is the inner infallible inspired word of God I'm King James top of my head bottom of my feet nothing else ain't adding nothing to it don't need to change it don't need to take any you know why they want to change it because if you open this book he'll open up the scriptures and he'll start to work down on the inside of you if you don't hey many atheists have gotten saved by trying to read the Bible and prove it wrong revival will come right out of the pages of God's word we'll never be enlightened we'll never truly be excited until the word of God becomes open by the Lord himself in our hearts when I was pastor my last church at Blessed Hope Baptist Church we didn't have a shredder we had some important papers that needed to be destroyed so my daughter Brienne and I did it the redneck way Got a 55-gallon metal drum. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Put a little kindling in there. Got a fire started. And I mean, we had a load of these papers and we started burning them, burning them. Time started getting away from us. And we, me and Brienne, now she's like me. She can talk. We done talked about everything. that I. She done talked about everything I want to listen to and talked a whole lot more. 
And I done talked about everything she was willing to listen to and a whole lot more. And I was ready to go. So I just grabbed what was left, threw it, threw it in that can, and it kind of smothered down. And it kind of began to smoke. And I couldn't see any fire. And smoke was coming out. And Brianne said, I think the fire, finally the smoke lit up. And she said, I think you put too much in there. And the fire went out. And I reached over and picked up a piece of old rebar, a piece of metal. And I walked up there and I said, nah, there's still some fire down in there. And I put that rebar in there and stoked it up. Y'all know what's stoking up the fire? Stoked it up a little bit. You know what happened? It blazed up and caught everything in there on fire. Here's what happened. They were sitting at meat. He had breaking bread and giving it to them. They realized that he was them. And they said, I didn't know what was going on. But when we was walking by the way, that double two-edged sword that proceeds out of his mouth, he had reached up there and got that and run it down in there and them dying embers in their heart as they drug along toward Emmaus. And he started, glory to God, God, may he tonight take his word that sharp two edged sword which is the word of God and stoke it up and among our dying embers ain't no telling that's what happened to them all of a sudden revival fires the fire of God himself begin to burn in their hearts and it excited I don't know about you I don't like it dead I don't like it dry my saying is I was born to fire and the smoke won't do stoke it up Lord stoke it up I don't want to smoke I want the fire of God burning in my heart it was this quality time that enlightened them it was this quality time that excited them we come to verse 33 and I'm finished it was this quality time that empowered them Look at verse 33. They rose up the same hour. What that means is right then. Didn't mean to wait 59 minutes later, right before the hour was up. What the Bible's saying there is he stoked up the fire, he vanished out of their sight. They looked at one another. This ain't in your King James Bible. This is Weaver's country commentary on the King James Bible. It is not the Bible. It is not trying to change the Bible. It is just my way of expressing through my imagination what was actually happening. He vanished out of their sight. They looked at one another and said, man, my heart was on fire when he is talking to me as we walk by the way. And it's... Now, I believe it's Cleopas and his wife his wife said mine too he jumped up and said I think I'll just make a stand right here what happened was during this quality time God empowered them to stand up we live in a wicked perverse untoward generation we live in a religious society where we think that we can get saved live like we want to act like we want to do what we want to and God's going to bless us and take us to heaven when we die. But that's contrary to the word of God. And what we need in this day is we need God's people to get so excited, have the fire burning, that they say right here, this same hour, not next year for a New Year's resolution, not when I get this job finished and retire and have time uh, right when everything gets settled down uh, but right now I'm making a stand uh, I'm standing up right here uh, I ain't a going that way uh, I don't care what it costs I don't care what anybody says uh, I'm making my stand uh, I'm on fire for God uh, I'm in love with Jesus Christ uh, I believe this word's his word uh, and I'm standing on it I know that in this day uh, it's easier to go alone to get alone. But that ain't never been my personality. <laughs> when I got in trouble as a teenager, my mom and daddy never told me, you're running around with the wrong crowd. Because I wasn't following the crowd. 
if a bunch of us got in trouble you go ahead and mark it down I instituted that I led the other ones in it I ain't never been too much one to follow I don't like to go alone to get along and I made my mind up I don't care what they think about me I don't care what they think about me God's done something on the inside of me God has done something through his word and I think right now I'm just going to stand up I'm going to stand up and be counted I'm going to stand up and say I believe in the old time way I ain't a backing off of it I ain't a stepping left and right I'm standing right in the middle of the road during the Bible days especially in the New Testament those Roman soldiers would take what we would call nails or spikes drive them through out the bottom of their war shoes when they were told to hold the line they would take and stomp those nails or spikes down in the ground and it was to let the enemy know that you can't come past here if you try to come past here you'll have to do it over my dead body because I am going to stand right here I'm not giving an inch I'm not compromising I'm not backing down and they said at that same hour now you see them drooping all the way to a mess but now they're standing up power is rushing into them causing them to do what early in the day they could not do. May God's word excite us and set our hearts on fire that we'll stand in this wicked day. Not only did it empower them to stand up, what's this in verse 32? I mean 33. It said, and <clears throat> I probably told this here. My wife's a two state certified school teacher. She helps me with the English language. But I didn't learn about this word and from her. I learned about it on Saturday morning cartoons. You young folk had to Google this. When I was a kid, cartoons only came on on Saturday morning. It came on real early. And they went till 1230, the last one came on. Where I'm from, it was Fat Albert. And it went off at one o'clock. And NWA Championship Wrestling came on. And then I think sometime wide world of sports followed it but in that morning block of cartoons there was a little cartoon short that was called schoolhouse rock and one of those it uh, showed a train engine backing up to three train, train, train cars and on the first one was written that word and and a female sounding voice would come on and say conjunction junction What's your function? And a male sounding voice would come back and say, hooking up words and phrases and clauses. And it show that train engine backing up and hooking up to them. What the Bible does, uh, it says that they rose up at that very hour, at that same hour. And then it says, and. In other words, uh, they went together. You didn't have the standing up without what the returning to Jerusalem. I almost call it this. Not only did it empower them to stand up, but it empowered them to step it up. Yes. It happened. And if you ever get empowered to, to stand up, we won't have to get you to step it up. You'll go back to where you left it. You'll go right back to where it is. You'll go right back to where the mess is stirring, where the people of God are stirring. You'll get right back there. And I promise you, I'll, just on the context uh, that the walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus took a whole lot longer than the walk back from Emmaus uh, uh, to Jerusalem. They had a little pep uh, in their step. They're not dragging back to Jerusalem praise God a quick step in it hallelujah many of you know back in my younger day I was a police officer I was cocky uh, my daddy was a head busting one so I had to be careful what I did on the radio because even as a grown man they'd call my daddy and tell him honestly I, I, I don't even know if I ever told my wife there's times when I should have called for backup but I didn't because they didn't want my daddy to think I'm scared and needed backup. I know that's stupid. I'm glad that God takes care of crazy people. But I had a, I worked in a city, a town, and I had a deputy, and we were buddies. When he was on the same shift I was, we watched each other's back. And I remember one night, I, this 
they didn't train me to do this. I stopped the car, had four men in it. I got all four of them out at one time. Had them around the car. And I seen them start to get antsy. We used to call it our spider sense. It'd get to tingling. You'd feel like something could go wrong. Something bad, you know what I'm talking about. Something bad about to jump off. And my, uh, my buddy, his last name was Allen, Deputy Allen, come on the radio and to ask me if I'm okay. Our, our code number is 104. He called my number 6 uh, uh, 10 four. And I reached up and the hairs were standing up on my arm and the hairs were standing up on my neck. And I reached up and keyed that mic and said, step it up. In other words, it ain't went bad yet. But the faster you can get here, the better it'll be. God's son sitting down there broke that bread and handed it to them vanished out of their sight uh, they were empowered uh, they jumped up at that same hour and they said we got to get back to Jerusalem we got to let everybody know we got to spread the word we got to get back in the fight I tell you we're living in the last days uh, the trumpet could sound at any moment and a world's going to hell all around us we don't have time to drag around we don't have time to stay in the dark we don't have time to whine and bellyache and complain we need God to empower us we need to stand up and we need to step it up praise God we need to rush right in to where all the action is my dad when I was going to be a policeman he said don't be anything don't be a policeman policemen are crazy when everybody else is running away they run in firemen are worse than policemen I mean, stand let the thing burn down where you can control it and then stand out here and put it. Don't go inside. <laughs> but we run inside with folk with guns and knives. I tell you what God's people need. We need the power of God. We run right up in the middle of it. Too long we've let the world push us around, knock us around. We've cowered down. But now's the time uh, that somebody's going to have to say, I'm so full of God. Uh, I'm so on fire for God. Uh, I'm not only just going to stand up, but I'm going to step it up. I'm going to run right into the thick of it. I'm going to get right in the middle of it. And I'm going to be who God saved me and empowered me to be. I give you this, I'm finished. Not only did they stand up, not only did they step it up, but it empowered them. Watch what they did. They took off to Jerusalem and they found the 11 gathered together and them that were with them. It empowered them to side up. Time to choose a side. It doesn't matter, you got to choose with the world. You got to choose with the ecumenicals, the contemporary crowd, the recovering fundamentalists, or you're going to have to side with the 11. Those who said, we ain't seen him yet, we don't know him yet, but we ain't leaving Jerusalem, we're too far in, the empty tomb's enough, the words of Mary and the women, it is enough, we're going to hang on, we're going to stay right here, we're not waving white flags, we're not throwing in towels, we're not giving up, and them fellas, uh, uh, Cleopas and his wife, they run all the way back to Jerusalem, and they say, I'll tell you what, I'm hunting that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you the day in which we live they're independent fundamental King James Bible only churches that won't preach the word of God like God wrote it right. they stand on their traditions they stand on what they that ain't my crowd no. but you find that old crowd yeah. that ain't looking to make a name for himself they ain't trying to be somebody yeah. they ain't too good that they're looking down their nose at everybody yeah. Yeah. They just on fire for God. Yeah. And they just believe God. Yeah. They believe the word of God's the word of God, every yeah. word of it. If it disagrees with what I believe, I'm wrong, it's right. Uh, they just believe we ought to preach the gospel to the whole world, uh, not just to a select few. Uh, they believe Jesus died and paid the sins uh, of the whole world. Uh, they believe we ought to live right, act right, talk right. We, they believe we ought to be right. We ought to uh, darken the door when the church is open. We ought to be a light shining in a dark place. We ought to stand up if we have to stand alone. Uh, mark me down. That's my crowd. Uh, that's who I'm with. You got it. We, I know we out of date. I know we get getting smaller and smaller in number but that's my crowd that's who I'm with I'm signed 
getting up. I'm going on record. I still like those that believe, truly believe in the blood, the book, and the blessed hope. That's my crowd. Moses walked out of the palace one day and saw all them Israelites mashing around in mud pits. I don't know what they were talking about, but they may have been talking all my life. Grandpa, all my life, I've been in slavery. He said, don't worry about it, son. As long as Joseph bones wrapped up in a coffin and sitting over there, God hadn't forgot about us. Because Joseph said one of these days, the Lord's going to come down here. He's going to deliver you out of the land of Egypt. And when he does, don't leave me down here. I don't want to be identified with this world. I, I don't want to be buried down here in the land of Egypt. I want you to carry me over there to victory. I want you to carry me over there to Canaan. I want you to carry me. Joseph, though he was basically the prime minister in charge in Egypt, when he got ready to die, said, this ain't my country. This ain't my people. This ain't my crowd. I don't want to be with them. I'm telling you, Moses got excited and said, my people may be mashing around in mud pits they may be in bondage and they may not have a dime to their name or their own land and the next thing you know there's Prince Moses out there mashing around you say that crowd's have died off I'll mash around with them until Jesus comes he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us he said one day a trumpet's gonna sound I'm siding up with them I'm mashing around not because I'm a super saint not because I, I've done anything special but because during my quality time with the Lord he empowered me to be what he saved me and called me to be our heads are bowed our eyes are closed here's the question it's not do you spend a lot of time with the Lord because I know we do but do you spend a lot of quality time with the Lord may God help us to make our time with him quality time because it will change your life it is quality time that makes the difference pastor you come did you know that IBC is now on iTunes TuneIn SoundCloud and Google Play head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today and as always thanks for listening